Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, Siouxland Oral Surgery. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Good morning, Bill. How are you? Let's talk wisdom teeth to start, and then then we'll double back and talk a couple of other questions that people are asking. So wisdom teeth, what is important for people to know about Siouxland Oral Surgery? One of the things that people should know is oral surgeons are trained for another four to six years after dental school specifically to do these surgeries. When you come out of dental school, you're really not trained to do this. So one of our mottos is let the oral surgeons do the oral surgery. Just like if you hurt your knee or your hip and you needed orthopedic surgery, you'd go to an orthopedic surgeon. That's kind of what you do. Cardiology, you need a stent or a bypass. See a cardiologist. So for us, regarding the wisdom teeth, this is what we do. Um, if you were to take either one of us right out of school and we only did one surgery a week versus us doing 10 or 12 a day, well, who's going to be better at it over time? It's just an experience level. So for people who are contemplating getting their wisdom teeth out, um, we've got four office locations to make it easy. You don't have to drive all the way to Sioux Falls. Nobody likes another two-hour drive to go back home because they had to drive to Sioux Falls if we're in Mitchell or Yankton or Brookings. So there's the convenience factor. There's the training and experience factor. But for us, one of the main things that makes it easier and reduces the uh, complication rate is that the roots of the wisdom teeth are about a third formed. Once they're about a third formed, it makes them really easy to take out. The complication rates go down. Um, typically, it's the um, younger generation of teenagers, so 14, 15, 16, 17, right around there. Um, and that's just a, a, a good age to get them out if you need them out. And also, um, in addition to what Dennis said, only oral surgeons should be doing uh, true IV anesthesia in the office setting. And so, you know, we utilize those skills to make sure the patient has a completely peaceful experience. And because we're very efficient at we do at what we do, excuse me, the surgery all, takes a lot less time. So not only does the patient get to have a quiet, peaceful, uh, relaxing little nap, okay, it's also uh, done quite efficiently, and um, they're back with their family um, and always telling us, I can't believe it, it, it was that fast. I can't believe you guys took care of business so quickly, and they're always very pleased with that. So, Yeah, just to build, just to build on what Dr. George said, a typical set of uncomplicated wisdom teeth should take us about 10 to 15 minutes to do. And that's our surgical time. And then there's the recovery time anywhere between half an hour to an hour before they're ready to go home and, and pass the criteria for discharge. So that's kind of the standard. So if you're getting a set of wisdom teeth out and it's taking an hour, two hours, three hours the whole afternoon, you're probably not in the right spot. You know, I just wonder if things have changed. I had my wisdom teeth out uh, way too many years ago. but the uh, You're 30. I thought you were yeah. 30. Thank, Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. But uh, they took all four out in one setting, and it was kind of like, did I need all four out at the same time, or would it have been wiser to maybe have done a couple of two different settings? Well, you, typically we take out all four because you don't want the person to go through all of that trauma a second or a third or a fourth time. And the other thing to remember is uh, the lower jaw is is paired. And the, even if you only take out one wisdom tooth on one side and leave the other one, it's still going to hurt because you still have to move the jaw. And it's going, it's not like, it's, it's not like your leg. I need uh, surgery on both my legs. I'll do one first because then I can baby it and I can kind of be more load bearing on the other one. And then I can flip-flop and do the other surgery on the other leg. It doesn't work that way in the oral cavity. So uh, for the vast majority of people, uh, we do all four at the same time. And we also know, especially with, um, say, older patients and um, folks with uh, much more complicated wisdom teeth, when to not do surgery, meaning that if, if a tooth is asymptomatic and looks like it's not going to ever become a problem for the patient, but yet the host of complications associated with surgery are are looming we we kind of know you know when it's okay to say we're not going to operate on this area we'll monitor it i mean that that decision usually uh should come from us you know the other thing that happens with you guys is you've got a few more years of experience you have a few more teeth that you've pulled rather than somebody that uh, they only do one surgery a week right and that goes that speaks to the 
experience level and being a specialist. So, of course, and a specialist in any field is going to have more experience and more training than somebody who's not a specialist trying to do the same thing. And that, that applies for medicine and for dentistry. And uh, one of the things is the advent of CT scanners. We're trained uh, to read CT scans as part of our residency training, not because we bought one and the rep is teaching us how to do it on a weekend course. Um, and why is that important? Well, for a lot of the wisdom teeth that we remove, there's a nerve that's relatively close by, and it's about a 1% chance you end up with a permanent numb lip or a tongue. But in some people, those chances are higher. And then we use our CT scanner, and we can look at things in cross-section and three dimensions, and we can find out a little bit better where that nerve is, is actually, and then we can modify our surgical technique to stay away from it and minimize your risks. We have a wonderful group of... Uh... Um, general dentists and uh, other referring practitioners that we work with who um, appreciate how we go about doing this for patients. And so, you know, uh, anytime a patient is referred to us, we take that very seriously, whether it's uh, the most completely set of routine uh, wisdom teeth or the most difficult set. Um, we're very honored and, and, and happy with the fact that um, – the referring doctor uh, trusts us to take care of his or her patients. And that's something, like I said, we take very seriously. When we talked in November, we talked about a brand new all ceramic dental implant. You gotten some questions on that? Um, a lot of people are coming to us for the placement of dental implants in the setting of their losing a front tooth. So we call that the aesthetic zone. So the aesthetic demands in that zone are higher than maybe in the uh, where your molars are. That's more of a functional concern. And both are equally important. That's something maybe we can talk about on another day. But uh, a lot of people are asking for uh, implants that have uh, uh, aesthetics as their priority, and the ceramics uh, satisfy that need. They've got or they have uh, a better soft tissue response than the titanium. And uh, if there is some bone or some gum tissue that dies back a little bit, instead of getting the graying of the titanium, you'll the white of the uh, ceramic implants uh, doesn't tend to cause any kind of discoloration of the gum tissue. So you get a better cosmetic result overall. And so far, um, we've probably placed about 40 of them. They just became available wow. in February. And so we've got a good track record now, um, probably about, Eight to ten of them have been restored um, with the final prosthetics. So, so far, everyone has been quite happy with them. The dentists are happy with them, and the patients seem very, very pleased. So it's just uh, another another tool in the box that we can utilize. And I'm sure with a year's experience, you want to make sure that they're healthy before they go into a surgery. The heart needs to be checked. What else needs to be checked? Well, you know, we do a, a, a medical uh, screening of all of our patients, and if if anything kind of uh, uh, pops up on their medical history um, or a multitude of things pop up on their medical history, um, we, we will set them aside for a consultation first, and, and then we decide if we need to involve their primary care physician or other members of their, their health team. Uh, usually if there's a, a, a cardiologist, let's say, that the patient sees, quite regularly, of course we want their input. And again, that's part of our training that we have uh, one boot in the dental world and one boot in the medical world. And we, we bring, try to bring harmony to both sides of that. So, so we know when to call on our medical friends to step in and take a look at some things for us to make sure our patient is not only going to have a, a smooth surgery from us, but that it's going to be safe and um, minimize any complications. How do people get started? Uh, typically, uh, they'll either call our office directly um, for either wisdom teeth or get a tooth pulled or um, for a dental implant. Uh, but uh, a lot of times they talk with their general dentist to form an overall treatment plan, and then their general dentist will refer uh, the patient over. And, and typically that's what we prefer, just to make sure everyone's all on the same page, uh, especially when it comes out to taking different teeth out sometimes from a restorative standpoint, it's better to try and keep some of these teeth, whereas from an oral surgery standpoint, it might be better to get them out. And so there's typically a meeting of the minds between the restoring doctor and us, and we come up with a plan for the patient. So we call that the team approach. And uh, it's also important to note, uh, Bill, in addition to, to doing these, uh, 
these casts for the uh, the patients and so forth. We also like to, to kind of give a shout out to our, our friends in the general dental community and uh, restoring restoring dentists. Um, and for those that uh, you know uh, have any thoughts about uh, possibly uh, using us to help them out with a case or treating some of their patients, we encourage them to give us a call if they want. Talk to us about what we offer and uh, the lengths we're willing to go uh, for their patients, and I think they'll be very pleasantly surprised. Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, Siouxland Oral Surgery, appreciate the visit. Thanks for having us, Bill. Thank you, as always. Thanks for having us, Bill.